August the 14th, 2019. So we are um, officially on the hump day of the week, middle part of the week. Hopefully you're having a great um, middle of the month of August. I know as summer starts to wind down, kids are going back to school. In fact, there's a lot of kids that are already in school. And I was trying to think when I was a kiddo back in the day, I think, uh, I think we went to school like maybe the last week of August. Um, and then like when I went to Purdue, I ended up going, I think it was the week after Labor Day, maybe is when they started that. But earlier and earlier, the kids have to go back to school and I feel sorry for the kids because they get to have fun when they're out of school and when they're in school, they don't have as much fun. So welcome to Trina from, uh, let's see, I think you're from Indiana. Yes, the Hoosier State, that's where you're from. Welcome to Nancy, welcome to Holly, welcome to Carla, welcome to Francesca. Uh, people from all over the place are checking in. So it is, uh, it's uh, interesting, the topic that I have today, uh, it's something that I don't think I specifically have ever addressed this before, but I think it's important to talk about. The Lord has given me some examples fresh the last uh, couple of weeks and how important that it is to discuss this. So uh, the topic of the day is when the best contact with a Jezebel becomes no contact. Um, if you think about that, it's, and I'll preface all of this because every situation is unique and every situation is different. You know, whether you are married to a person that struggles with Jezebel, whether you are a friend, whether you are a person that works with a person that has Jezebel, whether that person is your boss, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a family member. Um, every situation is different and unique. That's why it's always important to get the Holy Spirit's leading and direction on how you handle and deal with a person that has that spirit of Jezebel. You know, and, and those that have Jezebel that are married to those, all those situations are unique. You know, my, my um, mantra has always been get delivered, not divorced, but it takes two people. And if the one person that has the spirit of Jezebel strongly refuses to humble themselves and get delivered, then you're, you're living with a person that has demons that's going to attack you and you'll never have peace, you know, and it can wear on a person's physical body to where they ended up, you know, dying. I've had several people that have died staying in these toxic relationships. And it's a challenge because when you're married to someone, many times a person that has such a mercy heart and a desire to love their spouse, they end up getting married to those that have Jezebel and they take advantage of that and they hurt you over and over and over again and it wears on you. And so a lot of times those that have the mercy heart don't want to go through the divorce, um, but yet they can't, they can't live with a person that's controlling, manipulative, dominating, lying, you know, and uh, it's overbearing. And so it's really a challenging decision for people when they finally say, okay, I'm gonna have to separate. I don't want to, I love you, but I have to do this to survive. You know, I know that personally, I know what it's like. God had me go through that for a reason. Now we're seeing thousands of people around the world that are getting delivered from those spirits. Not everyone, because they have a free will, they have a choice. So I'm gonna address a couple of different uh, scenarios because you know, everyone deals with people that have Jezebel every day. You know, you have people that are you're at work with that have it, people that are um, customers of yours, people that you're out shopping, people that are your family members. We all deal with it uh, at some level. That's why it's a, uh, that's why this ministry is so resonating with so many people, you know, because my heart, you know, is uh, hopefully like uh, the Lord's heart. And that is, he doesn't want anyone to perish but yet they have a free will and they can choose to keep these spirits or they can choose to humble themselves and forgive others and get delivered from them. It's up to each individual person. So we cannot take a one-stop approach on this for everyone. But in many cases, the Lord has shown me that the best case in, uh, if, if well, here, here's the deal, this is how you handle it. Um, and again, if they're your spouse, it may be a little different than how you handle it if it's just a friend from church. Um, and I'll try to address most of those scenarios. Um, let's say it's, let's say this person is your spouse. How should you best address it with the person? You know, the best way is to, 
address it gently with love. And that's really hard when you are a person that deals with the Ahab spirit because you're normally walking on eggshells around that person anyway. You know that anything can set them off and they start to get mad and angry, just like a snapping your fingers. And so you brace yourself for something mean. <laughs> and so uh, typically um, the best way of doing this is if a person's got a spirit of, of Jezebel is to let them watch another person talk about it. You know, that's the best way that I've seen for it to work is give them a video of another, if it's a man that deals with Jezebel, give them a testimony. We've got, I don't know, 35 different testimony videos now on my YouTube channel, Nelson Schumann 67. And that gives them, I think, the best chance when they listen to another man talking about this or they listen to a woman, if the woman's got the spirit of Jezebel. That is probably the best way of dealing with that. Um, because then they have a chance to watch it if they watch the whole way through that the Holy Spirit will then start to speak to them and Then the next stage would be to actually have them go through one of my worldwide deliverance sessions They have to do it with a humble heart though because if they again They're gonna have pride so that prideful spirit is gonna try and tell them that they're not the problem that you're the problem again we're talking about the spousal relationship here and uh, Again percentage wise is the people getting delivered it depends you know if a person's been hurt really deeply by fathers and mothers or sexual violations, it may take them a while before they break down that spirit of pride to see themselves as the person that's hurting their spouse. Because most times that spirit's gonna tell them to blame their spouse and accuse them of having Jezebel. Is what normally will try to happen. So, so that being said, that's how I would approach it if I were married to someone. You know, and again, it's up to them. You can't make them get delivered. And it's frustrating, I know. You don't want to have to go through the hoops of separating. You don't want to have to go through a divorce. You know, I did not want to have to go through that. But it is what it is, you know. And, and of course, those that have the strong spirit of Jezebel are masters at lying. They will flat out lie to as many people as they can to try to get them on their side so that they look down upon you. They stare at you with evil eyes. And then you go to church, you go to an a athletic event, and everybody's staring at you like, oh, you're so bad. And you're like, seriously? I know exactly what's happened. Is my spouse has lied about me. I don't know what they've said, maybe. But they've turned entire communities against me or churches against me and so forth. So... And that's not fun. You know, I went through that and I'm like, you know, everything in me was like, hello, I'm actually not the bad one. I'm the good one. I've gone through a lot of hell here. If you knew half of what I went through. <laughs> and, and then there's still people that are going to believe those people. And what I've seen is oftentimes those that will side with those people that have strong Jezebel spirits have Jezebel spirits themselves. And those demons love to get together and to cohabitate <laughs> and spread rumors and lies about you. Those that have a godly heart, those that are more gentle, oftentimes will start to pick up on things and say, hmm, they might be fitting. And, uh, and then they talk maybe to the other person that has been the victim, and they're like, okay, I can sense they're a really good person. They're very loving, gentle, and sweet. So then you'll get those that aren't of the same like spirit that will pull away from those that are the Jezebel. Um, but what happens if you're a spouse and they won't get delivered? You know, what, how do you do, deal with that? You know, if you continue, and this is so true, and the Lord showed me this, and it was clear as a bell. He said, Nelson, if you continue to stay in contact with that person that has that spirit of Jezebel, he said, all you're doing is talking to a demon at that point. The demons are coming through them. They're going to wear you out. They're going to waste your time. They're going to talk in circles. They're going to blame you. And it's going to exhaust you. And he said that in that case, he said, you can give them time to repent. Then there will come a time that the Lord will confirm it's time to separate. It's time to say enough of this. You, I've given you time to repent. I've given you time to humble yourself. You won't do it. So I'll separate. Then you have to brace yourself because then the smear campaign will start. And they will start contacting everybody and anybody they can to get them on their side. That's how it works. Normally those that are the victims will wait until someone approaches them and then they will share the truth. But they don't feel comfortable sharing this in mass with everyone. Um, and that's what the Jezebel spirit will do. And then it may come down to where it's time for the divorce. And it grieves the Lord because, you know, just like it grieved it under Moses' time. But he said their hearts were hardened. And that's why he allowed them to grant them the divorce. 
And the same thing with the Jezebels is they will have hard hearts. And if they will not, if they refuse to get delivered, then there, you have no choice. Because if you stay with that person, you will never come into the calling the Lord has for you. You will not be able to do what the Lord wants. They will put up roadblocks for you everywhere you go. And it could be that you have a calling to be a, a singer in the um, choir. It may be that you're going to help out somewhere and they'll be jealous of you and put up all these roadblocks saying you shouldn't be talking to a man or a woman, blah, 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 and, and uh, do everything they can to stop you from the Lord's calling. And now it came down for me, the Lord said, who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the demons in your spouse or are you going to serve me? I'm like, I'm going to serve you, Lord, you know, enough of this. And he said, yeah, you've gone through it. You know, this is by design. It's part of the um, process of you coming into the ministry calling that I have for you. Specifically, you had to go through it for six years, not telling anybody, going through all that because there's others that you'll be able to minister at a very deep level that have no clue why they loved and loved and loved their spouse and the spouse did evil things back to them. You know, it was because they were hearing demons and they were hurt by their own fathers and mothers and sexual violations and that's how it all comes in and into play. So um, there will come a point where you have to say no more contact because it will wear you out if you keep answering every single text, every single phone call. They will just wear you out until you want to die. I mean, literally, they'll suck the life out of you. You will be so exhausted at the end of the day. And so there comes a point you have to say no more and block them. And saying enough is enough. I am not going to do this. And at that point, then you give them to God. You know, if you want to pray for them, you can. But you've got to give them to God. Say, listen, God, you love them more than I impossibly can do, even though you might still love them. But I'm going to give them to you at this point, you know, because their salvation is at hand. They oftentimes think that they're Christians and so forth, and they're not. They're liars. They are deceivers, and uh, they are of the, of the enemy at that point. So, so you could be inhibiting them getting delivered and coming to the Lord truly by staying in that relationship, because then the demons in them are controlling you, left, right, everywhere you go, and they hurt you. They hurt your children, and uh, it's not fun. So. So there comes a time that you have to have no contact and say, no, no more. I'm not wasting my time and my efforts on responding to demons in that person because that's exactly what has happened with them. Um, and then what you have to do is they're going to try to get in through emails, texts if they can unless you block them, Facebook and so forth. You have to resist reading what they're going to say to you. Not until they've humbled themselves truly humble. Oftentimes you have crocodile tears, which I would say are Leviathan tears, um, but they're fake. They're not real. Trying to draw you back in, pull your heartstrings. So um, if they're not doing that, then you have to not even look at the messages because all you'll do if you read that is those words and the, oftentimes the voices of that person will be replayed in your mind over and over and over again. So so that's how um, you have to be with spouses. Now let's switch gears to say a person that's your friend. You know, a person that is your friend or a person that's just an acquaintance. How do you deal with that once you recognize that person is operating in Jezebel? They're spreading lies, they're spreading rumors. How do you best handle that? Again, always let the Holy Spirit guide you on every situation. But let's say that you know that you know that you know that that person has lied and continues to lie. What do you do when they reach out to you? I know this is how I handle it and it works pretty pretty good. If I know a person is operating in that spirit and they're trying to lie to me about either their spouse, former spouse, whatever situation, I won't read it, I won't listen to it once I figure out that's from that person if they're calling me, leaving me a message. Oftentimes, the deviant ones will block their numbers so they can leave a message so that way they can get through to you and try to, to get their message out. Well, I won't listen to it. I will delete it. I'm not going to waste my time listening to lies from demons. So I have to go no contact with those people. And the same thing with you guys. If you know that that person is, is a Jezebel, don't waste your time. Why would you? Why would you allow yourself to listen to lies straight from the pit of hell? You need to not do anything with that other than delete it. Don't read emails. You know, as soon as I get an email, um, and I have people that will occasionally from time to time will try to come against me, 
you know, and if I start to read, and if I read the, if I were to read the whole thing, if it starts out negative and lying and stuff, trying to come against me, I won't read it. I'll put it in the junk email and say, okay, I will never read that from that person again anymore. You know, until I know that that person has repented, which oftentimes is very few and far between. Why would I, why would I listen to a demon? Why would you listen to a demon? So you have to go no contact with people at times. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. You know, and again, we always want to give them a chance. But once we've given them chances and chances, and then the Lord will tell you, okay, that's the last chance now. It's time to move on. Then you give them to God. God, you know, it, they're yours, not mine. You know, and uh, what will happen is you'll have more peace in your life. Because Jesse's want to go in and pull you into their drama, lie, twist the truth, cause you to get into fear, cause you to get into anxiety, cause you to get into what if they do this and what if that. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, give you accusations. They will provoke you, trying to get you into fear, to manipulate you to do what they want. So the best thing is to do is to say no contact. I'm not going to talk anymore. Block them on Facebook. Block them on phone calls and uh, texts and don't listen or look at anything that they try to get through to you. You know, just it's it's true. It's it's like Satan himself is trying to get through to you. And would you, if you knew it was Satan trying to get a hold of you, what would you do? You'd stop it. Um, this is interesting. So Friday of last week, I did the teaching on witchcraft and severing the witch's cord. And there was a guy that got on. I didn't watch it until later. Um, who made a comment about, well, we're not supposed to pay back evil for evil. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> so we're supposed to just let the witches curse us until we die. So that person I know was uh, definitely into the demonic, into witchcraft, into, you know, it could have been a warlock, but I know he's friends with a specific person that is a witch, a, a well-known uh, witch in the church um, realm. So therefore, I'm like, okay, the guy's got to go, got to block him. No longer will I have contact with that person. Normally they'll expose themselves, and as soon as they do, you already have no more contact with them. You know, until they repent, and if they were to repent, then I can read a message, and, and I can tell in the first sentence if they are repentive, or at least trying to appear that way, um, or not. But uh, what's been interesting is after I gave that message, there have been many, many people over the weekend that have messaged me saying, thank you so much for talking about that. I wasn't sure how to deal with this. You know, I had this happen in my house. I heard people, you know, a witch walking on my roof. I had a witch trying to, you know, uh, make noise in my bedroom, on a, in a door, in a cabinet. And so now I'm severing their cords every time I hear that. And so then it goes away because then they have a challenge getting back into their bodies and <laughs> trying to find out. I'm like, listen, if you're going to do evil and try and scare people and curse people and get them sickness and hurt their children, and we're going to take this, you know, more offensively um, in, a, in a godly way. You know, you think about, uh, you know, David. He had, who was his demons? Goliath. He cut the neck of Goliath off. You know, we sometimes have to do these things in the spirit realm in order to um, have um, peace in our lives, in order to accomplish what God wants to in our lives. We can't just sit there like a target and have someone kill us, you know, so it's very interesting that uh, now that that message has, has been out there for the last couple of days, how many people, I mean, and it's going around the world, people are responding to me different countries saying, thank you so much, I used that this weekend, I needed to, God was all over that, and, and then that, that demonic manifestation trying to come against me stopped. Oh my gosh, who would have thought? You know, the churches aren't teaching us this, how to defend ourselves, they're just like, let's just Pray in tongues and say the name of Jesus. It's like, no, that's not taking your authority in Jesus' name. You know, come on, church, wake up and teach us about the authority in Jesus' name, what we can do to uh, take back what the enemy has stolen from us. So, in fact, I'm going to read this. Luke 12, 49, 53. And this came from Jesus. So let's do what Jesus does. Jesus says, I came to send fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. 
For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Father will be divided against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So what does that all mean? What that means to me, clearly, is he came for people to accept Christ. Those that reject Christ, they're not Christians. You know, those that say that they're Christians and go to church but act horribly, their hearts and their minds are evil. We are to have nothing to do with them. You know, we give them time to repent. We give them time. You know, and it's hard when you've got a father or mother that operates in these spirits. It's hard because a lot of times people say, well, what am I supposed to do? It's Father's Day. It's Mother's Day. I'm supposed to honor them. I'm like, well, there's a difference between honoring and allowing yourselves to be abused. You know, you can honor a person, but then yet say, I'm going to put up, you know, a healthy boundary so you don't step over that father or mother or anyone else and abuse me. And so there are times you have to go no contact with your parents. There's times you have to go no contact with pastors, you know, worship leaders, if they're operating in those spirits. Because you do not want to allow yourself to be hurt over and over and over again. It will slowly kill you. You will end up getting sicknesses and diseases and you can die. You will get sickness in your stomach. Oftentimes, if you're around a person that has Jezebel and they come into the room where you're at, you will start to feel sick in your stomach. And you're like, oh my gosh, why do I always feel sick when that person comes in? Because you know what's coming is the demonic vomiting coming out of their mouth. So Jesus said that we are to, essentially in this case, separate, divide. There you go. Couldn't be any clearer. And, um, and then he doesn't want that. He wants us all to accept his message, but it's a free will choice. And if a person rejects it, how will you know? You know it by the fruit coming out of their mouth, the fruit coming out of their behavior. If they are of Christ or if they are not, that's what makes the difference. Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Lord, Lord, look at all that I've done for you. You know, I've cast out demons in your name. I've prophesied in your name. I've done many wonders in your name. It's like, depart from me. I never knew you. Workers of uh, iniquity, sin, lawlessness. Why? Because he knew their hearts were evil and wicked. So there's a whole bunch of people that are in the churches that are not truly Christians, not truly saved. They say that there are, but their fruit stink. And it's, uh, it's disgusting. So it's best in, to have no contacts. And you can understand, when you're around a person that's going to continue to be horrible and mean to you, you don't want to be around them. You know, why would I? Why would I want to spend time with people that have uh, evil spirits and demonic spirits? You know, Jesus, you know, he had to go around them from time to time, but then he would slip away. He would go up into the mountains to get away from the Pharisees and the scribes that were evil. And um, it's, it's so important for us to, once we discern it, once we know it, have nothing to do with it. There's a lot of times um, I've noticed that people have commented to me over the last six months, seven, eight, nine months, <laughs> and said, you know what, I thought that person was a witch. I thought that person was evil and wicked. I always felt sick to my stomach whenever I heard them speak, or I could tell that they were fake. You know, what they were saying, They're, they were being fake sweet. They were not true. And so they would not listen to that person. They would end up ultimately blocking them. Well, that's wise, that's wisdom, you know? And uh, it's those that keep on getting drawn in that listen, that are caught in the crossfires. And oftentimes they get sickness and disease and, uh, you know, uh, have a lot of afflictions by following people that are not good. And then there's those that are truly of the enemy in the demonic world, in the satanic world, in the witchcraft world, that will be best buddies with those people and be uh, liars and deceivers along with them and have their backs. You know, the enemy has truly set up his, his um, army that are in the churches and we cannot tolerate this anymore. Too much toleration has been going on. You know, that's what's going on in the Trump administration. He's not tolerating crap anymore. And uh, it's a neat thing to watch because you see all these people who are doing deeply evil things, horrible things, and it's now coming to light. You know, the pedophile island, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, you know, now that he's uh, dead, and, and of course it's very questionable that he committed suicide, so, he had a whole bunch of information on the Clintons and everybody else. They were evil. They were wicked. They were, uh, you know, high-level witch. Hillary Clinton's a high-level witch. You can ask or project, you know. Um, so it's, she's evil. And, you know, we have to call evil evil. You know, in fact, there was um, um, 
what was it? There was a thing I was watching the other day where they had some left wing church leaders that were like praying for abortion. And I'm like, what? Are you crazy people? I'm like, you are so evil. You're like, okay, let's kill more babies. Seriously? You know, I interviewed Robia yesterday and uh, it's amazing that the DVD for Unplanned is the number one selling DVD and they had not even promoted it yet. Wasn't even able to be purchased until yesterday. And uh, how the number of abortion clinics has dropped uh, over 80% since 1991 in the United States. So uh, people are finally waking up saying, oh my gosh, what are we doing? We're killing babies? That's legal? That is so evil. We need to stop that, you know, and reverse that. And I know a lot of people did not think that that would ever happen. And we're going down the slippery slope over time that it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse until Christ comes back for the pure and spotless bride. Well, how many pure and spotless brides are there out there? Very, very few in the church. That's why it's so sad that I have to take my ministry, Restored to Freedom and the True Freedom Conferences, outside the church because the Lord said there's too many people in the larger churches that would not ever allow you to do a deliverance of people that have demons because there are so many in the church that have demons. A lot of them are in leadership. And I'm like, that's really sad, Lord. He's like, that's okay. You'll get more Marriott points. <laughs> so so anyway, I'm. Uh, in fact, I uh, scheduled... Uh, the one, uh, well, the next one's November 16th in Cleveland. The next one after that is at the Marriott at the Woodlands. It's beautiful. I've been there. Love the Woodlands down in Houston. You guys will love it. January the 18th. Tina is getting that finished to put on Eventbrite, so you can start signing up for that. And then, because um, I signed the contract uh, last night uh, for the Marriott, I am getting the contract this week from the Marriott at Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're going to be there February the 8th, and I'm going to keep adding and adding and adding throughout the rest of 2020. And so we can get hopefully 500 uh, peeps to come together and go through the deliverance. Because since the church has failed miserably in addressing this, I mean, I was amazed even at uh, Robia's message yesterday talking about how many churches were like pushing back on, on, on stopping abortion. I'm like, what? What church would do that? That's so simple. You know, more of a simple sell than it is to get the people in the church delivered <laughs> that are some of them in leadership that have these spirits. So, anyways, um, it needs to it's needing to change, and it is changing. And so, we do need to take back what the enemy has stolen. We do need to go no contact with certain people that are evil, um, that are wicked, that are operating in those spirits because they get fed on as much people that they can get to believe them. Of the lies of about a good person, you know, you know how 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 would I go about it? You know, oftentimes I ask the Lord, Lord, show me this person in the spirit. Who are they really? And the Lord will show me either, you know, as I'm awake or as I'm asleep, and I will know. Either have nothing to do with them, or listen to them, you know. And those are obviously that don't hear the Lord very clearly, or are the enemy are going to side with those that are the spirits of Jezebel, that are very wicked, very evil. In fact, there's one woman that I used to look up to, used to respect, and uh, she had um, supported a woman that's very d demonic, very Jezebelic, um, against her ex-husband, and uh, that shows me right there, you know, after years where she had the choice to see the truth and how the husband's ministry was being blessed greatly, and the, the wife, uh, ex-wife was doing nothing for the Lord, that uh, she uh, would accuse the ex-husband of lying. And I'm like, seriously? How can she not see this? It is apparent to anyone else. And the Lord's like, well, because she operates in Jezebel. That's why she is not to be trusted. And that's why she's supporting other Jezebels. I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. So, you know, how do you, how do you handle the situation if you're going to a church and the pastor is operating in that? Now, obviously, it's very, very challenging at that point because if you're going to be coming under a person that has Jezebel from a spiritual standpoint, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt your walk with the Lord. <clears throat> and if the person rejects getting delivered, which most times they will, if they're a pastor because they have all the pride and they have the control, then it's best to leave the church and say, goodbye, I'm not going to deal with this. Because you cannot come under leadership that operates in that spirit. It's very demonic. It's very evil. It will affect you. You will not have peace. You will not uh, learn anything that's true, that's godly, that will taint everything in your spiritual walk. So that's why it's best to walk away and block them and, 
and don't have anything to do with them unless they repent, you know, and change and then humble themselves. So, you know, and how do you handle it with leaders in a church? You know, again, if you're under that leader and you've gone to the pastor, you know, obviously, obviously the, the best, you know, the biblical way is to go to the person, address it with them, and if they repent, then great. You've earned yourself back a brother and they're going to get delivered. But if they won't, then you go to the pastor. Oftentimes they've already worked themselves in good with the pastor or pastors to make themselves look great and they'll come against you directly and cut you down. And then it's up to the pastors to discern who's telling the truth. You know, they have to pull a Solomon, like with the uh, two women that were arguing over the baby to decide who was the true mother. They have to have wisdom in that case. And so this whole uh, situation of uh, discernment is so critical, especially now, the day and age that we live in. Those that are operating in Jezebel, those that are in witchcraft, that are in the church, they're, at a, they're, 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 they're there planted by the enemy as much as they can to hurt God's people to get you to listen and, and, and bow down to them and do what they say. Do not, uh, you know, you cannot challenge me. And so you have to discern it for yourself. You know, oftentimes these pastors don't have a clue about the spirit of Jezebel. It is being talked about more than ever now than it ever was before. I will say that. So hopefully um, restorative freedom has played a part of that, um, which again blows me away because I'm just a kid from a cornfield. But um, it is neat. Um, I just found out there was another woman that got certified from restorative freedom, uh, under restorative freedom from Australia. We're up to at least four people now, I believe, in Australia, um, maybe a fifth. And um, anyway, it's growing. It's growing. The same success we've seen here in the States is happening in Australia. And I can't wait to come over to Australia. Yay! Then I can say, good day, mate. Um, can I have some shrimp on the barbie? Um, I thought that didn't sound very Australian, but, uh, anyway, I can, I can use an accent. Whenever I hear them talk, I always get my accent going. It's like, hello, how are you doing today? Um, in fact, I saw a video the other day of some kangaroos that were hopping around in snow. I think that was Debbie Lee Tanner, who's on here. Right now it's got, what time is it your time? It's got to be like, uh, what, two in the morning? Three in the morning your time? So you're up awfully late. So welcome to Debbie Lee Tanner. Debbie has done a great job, a bang up job down under, and um, I'm uh, excited to come there. Um, looks like I'll be coming there in 2020 uh, because my 2019 is pretty busy at this point. So, um, so anyways, um, Debbie's had to learn, you know, how to say no. It's 1:30, I think. Okay. It's probably two now because it's one o'clock Eastern time right now. So, yeah, sometimes I do talk like a British aristocrat. <laughs> um, it's funny too. It's um, when you're around different parts of the country. It's like oftentimes if I'm down in Texas, I'll say y'all more um, or fixin' to. They say that a lot down there. I'm fixin' to go to a conference this weekend. That means I'm not completely sure if I'm going, but I'm pretty darn sure I'm going to go. I'm fixing to. I'm planning to. So hopefully a lot of you are fixing to go to the Cleveland November 16th True Freedom Conference. Again, you have till August 31st to get the early bird discount on the uh, pricing to attend the uh, conference. So if you've not signed up yet, sign up so you don't forget. Again, you can go out to Restored to Freedom's ministry page on uh, Facebook and you can sign up for that. Um, that's where a link is at, or you can go out to Eventbrite and search for the conference. It's November the 16th. I know a lot of you will probably wait to the last minute and then sign up, but that's uh, fine. Um, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be fun, 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 because I like to have fun. Yes, Trina was actually the first one to sign up, the first one in the entire world. So how cool is that? I'm excited to uh, see all my friends there at the Cleveland, Ohio location. Um, what other deal? Oh, children. Let's talk about children. How do you handle children when they operate in that spirit? Now, again, when you have children that have Jezebel, they have to get it from somewhere. Oftentimes, they can get it from you, or they can get it from your spouse, um, or they could have been sexually touched inappropriately. Those are the main ways that they get that spirit. 
And so obviously, if you are the one that controlled, manipulated, lied, and hurt your children, you need to get delivered yourself. You need to apologize to them. And oftentimes, at that point, they will then start getting freed from that spirit. So that's why it's important that you do that. Now, if it was, say, your spouse, and you had to go through a divorce, and your spouse has Jezebel, then that's a challenge because it, it's, it's so challenging. Like you want your spouse to get, ex-spouse to get delivered because whenever your children come around them, they're gonna say things and do things to hurt them. Yet you also kind of want them to, you want them to get along with them, but you don't want them to get Jezebel by them. So it's a, it's a really big challenge, you know, when they're young and it's sad, you know, going through that. I know that firsthand. Um, as you get older, and your children get older, then there may be times that you do have to pull away from your children. You know, you love them, you want the best for them, but if they're still believing lies, and that's how the enemy works, lies in their mind, lies from a person, could be your ex-spouse, um, you may have to limit your contact with them, and it's hard. Same thing with your parents. You know, I know a lot of people say, oh my gosh, I miss my dad and my mom, I love them, or I wanna be around them, I want them to love me. I'm like, well, you can't make them until they're ready to go through deliverance. If they're not, then you can't. And so you may have to go no contact and say, okay, I, you know, talk minimally because you know every time that you talk with them, they're gonna say things to hurt you. And then you end up hearing those voices from them all day long, all week long, all month long, and you're not at peace. So, you know, in my life, I limit my dialoguing with people that have Jezebel spirits to, to a, you know, the strongest level. You know, obviously those in my inner circle don't have those spirits. If I had people in my inner circle that have Jezebel and I would listen to them, I would not be at peace. I would be hurt. I would be getting lies spoken to me, control of me and not be at peace. So, but obviously there are some that I have to deal with outside of my inner circle and have conversations with. But if I know that they're Jezebels and they're just lying to me, bold face, then I will pull away and I will block them if I have to. I'm not going to waste my time. They're time wasters. They want to waste your time. You know, hey, I want help. I want help. I really, really do. And then they don't want help. They lie. And they're like, oh my gosh, they got me again. Ah, how many times do I have to hit my head into the wall before I get it? That I can't trust them. And that's so true. You can't, you can't trust uh, people that have Jezebel. Um, but I think it is important. You know what Jesus said? He did not come to unite. He came to divide. Those that choose Jesus are great. You know, those that truly choose Jesus, that are repent. Those that say they choose Jesus, but are liars, you know, I would not spend much time with them. Because if you spend time with demons, <laughs> you're not going to be at peace. Because that's what's going to come out. And again, it's, it's wisdom not to be spending lots of time with people who are being afflicted. And it's sad. It's sad when you see children, like young children, and they're growing up with fathers and mothers and one of them has inherently the Jezebel, more of the Jezebel spirit, how they're getting hurt. You want to save the children from that because you know what's going to happen as they grow up, they're going to inherit those same demonic spirits in them because they're being hurt over and over and over again. You know, those that are witches today, those that are warlocks today, they didn't get that way because they had a good father and good mother upbringing. They got that way because they were abused. They were abused harshly, oftentimes sexually. You know, they could have been raped could have had fathers and uh, uncles and stuff have sex with them. And, and that's what gets the demons to have a foothold, a strong foothold. That's why it's very rare to see people coming out of satanic ritual abuse with not having these long-term effects, you know. And so it's a challenge, you know, and it's uh, sad when those people oftentimes will try to get into ministry and then be such covert levels that you can't perceive it easily. Because they don't go on Facebook Live and say, hello, I'm a witch. Hello, that, that's me. No, they act. They can read some Bible verses and sound all sweet and nice. And then oftentimes they get you alone one-on-one -on -one, and they do their dirty work. Or they'll say, I'm going to prophesy over you. And then they prophesy these things that aren't true. And they end up getting sicker and sicker. And uh, they have to break things off from all that. So, Anyways... Um, Speaking of prophecy, I haven't prophesied over people for a while. Let me do that. It's been a while, and I know people like that, and uh, I like doing that, so. All righty. Cheryl Elaine will give you a prophetic word. 
Halama kondre shita ba hatare ela ba kondre ma shita ba Halama kondre shita ba hatare kondre shita ba. Okay, Lord is showing me, Cheryl, that you have a heart, a heart that does um, love on people, especially those that have been hurt deeply. You have a a gifting to try to pour yourself into them, to help them. You have a very strong compassion level, but the enemy also knows that, and the enemy actually uses that against you. He takes advantage of you, of your loving kindness. And so the Lord's just um, telling you to, um, to become, you know, you think about Christ, you think about Jesus. He was very loving, very compassionate. But yet when it came to those that were the Pharisees and the scribes, he knew their hearts were evil. It's so the Lord saying to you to, to, to do as quickly as you can discern when that person is evil and not godly. And just like Jesus did, he got away from them. Um, so as soon as you can discern as quickly as possible, then cut those unhealthy ties with those people. Because the enemy will try to use your mercy heart against you, coming in and trying to play you as much as he can. So... He said, the Lord said, you're in the process of transitioning, though, out of the seasons of being used into a season of being used more by him. So the enemy has been using you to try to hurt you a lot, take advantage of your niceness. And the Lord's saying, no more. It is time to sever that cord. <laughs> it is time to sever the silver um, cords of uh, the witches and and to come into more fullness of who you are in Christ. Um, he said that the um, discernment level that he is giving you is being turned up like 50% louder so that you'll be able to see things much, much, much more clearly, much more quickly. You know, we all want that, you know. But there are some things, Lord said, there are some things that you specifically had to go through and endure in your life because of the calling that's within you. Um, just like myself, I had to go through some things I had to. I could not get out of it. Just like others that are watching, you had to go through some really hard things you did not want to go through. But God's using that now in ministry and will use it in greater ministries in many of your lives. So, um, so count it all joy. I know it's not fun being abused and being cursed. <laughs> but count it all joy because you get wiser for that every single time. Amen and amen. All righty. Um, Dave LeBlanc. I'm going to give you one. I don't know you. <laughs> um, I see you made a lot of comments on here today. I don't know if you. I don't know if I've ever seen you on any of mine. So I'm going to give you one. Dave LeBlanc. I think that's French, isn't it? You're probably from like Canada. Dave LeBlanc. All right. Okay, the Lord's saying, Dave, in fact, um, I see hockey. I don't know if you're a hockey fan or not. Um, second time here. All right. From Canada. Well, there you go. All right. So um, I just see, uh, I see the Lord saying, I want you to play more, um, play more, have more fun in your life. You know, that. The enemy oftentimes can get us into where we're focused more, wanting to do more, you know, read the Bible 20 hours a day and pray in tongues the other four hours and fast the other uh, forever, all these things, and which is all good, but oftentimes we end up leaving out the play side. And the Lord says to you, I want you to play. I want you to have fun. I want you to enjoy your life. And to uh, enjoy that means... There are games and things in life that you might have put off in the past to try to focus for your seasons in the past on drawing closer to the Lord. But he said, I want you to now enjoy your life, to have more fun, because there is a, there is a season that will be coming where you'll be doing a lot more ministering to individuals' lives um, that have gone through a lot of painful things. So there's a kind of a, 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 a time out from ministry, the Lord's saying for you right now, and that is just to enjoy the things in life, the simple things. You know, it could be going for walks in the woods, going to rivers, um, lakes, streams, going kayaking, going boating, 
going jet skiing. <laughs> I went jet skiing the other day. It was so much fun. I love jet skiing. Number one thing I'd like to do in my life is jet ski because it is fun, <laughs> fun, fun, fun. So, um, uh, so yes. Um, all right, T, that's what I'm sensing for you. Let me get a drink here. All right, Trina Weisel, I'll give you a word. Because the Lord says, my love, you have endured an extreme, extreme, extreme tribulation that many would never have ever recovered from. But for you, it's been like a season of desert for many, many years. The rains are coming back in a very strong way. A very strong way that will allow flowers to grow rapidly, quickly, like almost overnight. Um, in fact, um, what is it? I mean, I mean, I know dandelions, I mean, I just get a, a, you know, dandelions, of course, are like, I don't know, a weed, but they do have a yellowish, yellow, that's funny, <laughs> a yellowish um, color to them. But dandelions, the Lord showed me, when they're, when they're cut, when they're cut down, they oftentimes like will grow back like really fast. Like when you mow the grass, dandelions are like the first thing that explode up. So I sense like in your life that there is um, this season that is upon you basically now where a lot of great things, a lot of amazing things are just going to spring up. Things you can never even think that you would ever have had um, will become manifesting to you in the physical. Um, fun things to do, fun places to go. Um, the Lord says enough is enough, you know, and, uh, and what, he, what, what the Lord's been doing, he's been pushing you, pushing you, pushing you, stretching you, stretching you, stretching you to the brink of um, a lot in your life. Like you never thought you'd have to endure this and then there's something else that comes along later. Oh my gosh, I never thought I'd have to endure that. And then this new, you know, enemy attack comes against you. It's like, oh my gosh, is it ever going to end? You know, and there's times in the back of your mind, you're like, I just want to give up. You know, I don't think this is ever going to happen. But yet your faith kept getting strengthened through all that. So he says, continue to um, trust me for everything, for your finances, for your relationships, for your um, children, for ministry, everything. And there is going to be suddenlies that will happen, multiple suddenlies, not just one. Um, and it will all be worth it in the end. And uh, there are many people that are your cheerleaders. There are some that are your adversaries that believe the lies. But even the adversaries are going to be exposed the truth. And they will ultimately say, oh yeah, I was, I was her friend. <laughs> I was always for her. <laughs> And uh, because of the the uh, breadth and the depth of the calling that's in your life, so um, so blue skies are ahead of you, and uh, and yellow vehicles will be around you. <laughs> so there you go. Ba bam. All righty. Who else do we have? It's one nineteen. All right. Kim Spencer Ortega, I'll give you a word. I don't know why I get so thirsty just by talking. In fact, this is all the water I got left before I'm out, and I have to like leave for like two minutes to go get another water. All right. <laughs> um, Kim Ortega. Kim Spencer Ortega. Okay, so the Lord is showing me that, you know, it's been a dark season in your life. And, um, and yes, there are some, in one person in particular that 
you've had to essentially have minimal contact with and it's not been fun. Um, but he said to keep your head focused, your, your eyes focused on the tunnel, the lights at the end of the tunnel, um, because this is not going to last forever, that there will be lights. In fact, um, like the lights of Las Vegas, I know, that are bright and shining. I know that it's dark when you go through the tunnel, but it's going to be really bright like the lights in Las Vegas. Um, when the season that you're in has passed and there'll be a lot of new opportunities um, to you opening up, um, some in ministry, um, and, and the Lord's going to use you in, in many ways in helping others get set free and delivered um, from these spirits, spirits of Jezebel, Leviathan. Um, he has basically given you inside information as to how those spirits work, and it has had uh, an effect on you that um, you now have the awareness and the understanding and the comprehension for what that looks like. So, um, count it all done, the Lord said. Count it all done. And yes, your season of, uh, of fun is on the horizon. Um, he said, just give it more time. And, uh, and it will, again, be worth that in the end. So... So stay, stay positive. Speak life as much as you can. Do not let the enemy keep pinging you with enemy thoughts. Stay on the, stay on the bright side of things. So there you go. All right, I saw Don Casanova Leninger on here. I'm going to give you a word, Don. So uh, Don, of course, is. Uh, works for me here in uh, RTF. She is, uh, she also works full-time job with her husband, uh, Paul. So they have a great uh, business out there, but she has a very strong anointing um, in her life. Very strong. Um, I, like I have never seen someone that has such specificity in their dreams as she has, but she is amazingly um, exploded um, in her giftings from when we had first connected, which was back in 2017. In fact, she was the first brave woman to come out and uh, talk about Jezebel. And uh, it was really, she was a forerunner. In fact, the Lord said, you are a forerunner, girl. <laughs> you are a forerunner. And, um, and the Lord um, says that, you know, you have gone through some pretty extreme stuff and that uh, you basically laugh it all off. You know, because you are getting so strong in the spirit realm going through this stuff. And uh, he said that uh, the enemy will keep, you know, trying to ping you here, there, everywhere. But you just keep on laughing, keep on enjoying, and keep on uh, blazing the trail. Um, I know you live out there in Washington. Now, where you specifically live out, there's not many trees. But let's take you, uh, I don't know, two hours north, closer to Spokane. There's lots of trees there. And the Lord is saying, you are going to be a person blazing these trails through the forest by, by doing things that others had never thought of, never had the braveness to do before, uh, because you are fearless. And the enemy hates that about you because he said he can't ever get to you to get you into fear anymore um, because you just laugh at him. <laughs> you, you, you do. You, you have a great uh, um, laugh. You know, and you mock the enemy, and that uh, enemy hates that when he gets mocked. So, um, and I do see you and your husband both doing ministry together and going on this trailblazing. You know, um, you know the vacations that you've taken in the past are prophetic. You know, going places you've never gone before, um, into forests you've never been to before, and uh, whatever you set your foot on these territories, um, in the woods, in places of business, places of, uh, you know, churches and so forth. In fact, there's a lot of churches that can't, um, <laughs> can't handle all the anointing that you have, um, and the truth that you have with which to speak, because you're not afraid. You're, you're, uh, going to speak the truth in boldness and in love, um, but people need to hear that. 
and you're not afraid, you're not going to shy away. There's a lot of people in the churches today that would shy away from the topics that you're assigned to speak about. And uh, also, I do see you politically, you know, as aligned, you know, under what's going on right now with uh, the Trump administration and how they are exposing these deep, dark pedophile rings and sex rings and murdering of children and all these people, all their names are coming out. You know, you're on the cutting edge and uh, um, you're a forerunner on that. In fact, you've kept me up to date on a lot of things so that I just have not had time to uh, keep up with all that. But um, the Lord said, for a reason. You know, you want to know the truth. You want to expose the truth um, and truly get people set free and delivered. You know, you've seen the impact that it's had in your family. You've seen the impact that it's had on your loved ones. And... Uh, and God's going to continue to bless you, bless you financially, so that you can continue to do this full-time ministerially. And um, your heart is 100% in helping people get set free. And um, I see you like in a mobile home, uh, traveling and, and doing ministry, just enjoying life. So, yes, yay, amen. And you are um, definitely, has, have been such a great support to myself personally and to RTF. You know, you have, um, you know, and I remember, I remember when I, when I just, that was 2017, that was March 2017, I first did the Worldwide Deliverance Session, and I remember when you came forward and uh, were brave enough to speak, I was like, oh my gosh, who is this woman? I'm like, she's, 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 she's uh, the forerunner for other women that have come behind you, that have then stepped up to the table and said, yep, I was dealing with these spirits and have the kahunas to speak about the truth. And the Lord loves that about you and will continue to use you in a powerful way. In fact, I remember when I interviewed you the first time, you said the Lord had spoken to you that he wanted you to watch that video. You watched it later. And then later when you started getting the books and stuff, he said, I want you to be a part of that ministry. You know, and um, you didn't really know me. And so... God had you step out, you stepped out, you were willing to do that, so. How amazing is that? It's so great, it's so great, so awesome. Yay, yeah, 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 yay. Um, all righty, um, and then your sister, you know, I mean, well, first you got set freed, then your brother, then your sister, then your mom, then your aunt, and then it's just amazing, the snowball effect. And then when you get together for Christmas and the holidays, you have fun. You know, how many of us, dread the holidays because why we have to get together with people that have Jezebel and they're going to say things and do things to hurt you and it's so sad I also speak out this there's some people watching right now where the Lord's saying that you need to step out there's a lot of times what will happen is when you are in a relationship with someone that is toxic you the enemy's speaking to you in fear saying you know you know you can't get divorced you can't do do that that's a sin it's like, no, being abused by a person as Jezebel, that's the sin. Staying in the relationship underneath the person that refuses to get delivered and never doing anything for God your entire life, that's the sin. <laughs> so no, um, the Lord's saying that there's several that have been afraid of separating, even though they know they have to do it because they are dying, you know, slow death. The Lord's saying, I will give you words, I will confirm to you in dreams and visions and don't dismiss it, you know. And I, and for me, it was really hard. You know, the Lord, he told me, you know, stay in it, stay in it, stay in it, and I did. And when he finally said enough's enough, I mean, the final straw <laughs> uh, was just the ultimate control. And I'm like, I am not going to tolerate this. And I knew in my spirit, I'm like, Lord, it's like, who are you going to serve? The demons in her or the God of me? And I'm like, I'm going to serve you, you know. And I, I was hearing from the Lord clearly. And, you know... So I separated, and then she filed for divorce and then lied about me, so. But then the fruit, the fruit comes after that. So that's why oftentimes it's hard for people because they know as soon as they step out and say, okay, if I have to separate, what's gonna happen? Well, then that person's gonna lie, 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 lie as much as they can about you and not be honest. And you don't wanna go through that. Well, sometimes you have to go through that. You have to go through that to come into the freedom that waits for you, the freedom that the Lord wants to take you into. There's oftentimes a lot of dirty stares you have to get from people, you know, in uh, your school system, um, at athletic games, at uh, church, you know. I've had those dirty stares, and it's like, I don't want to do that. 
uh, I didn't do anything, you know, and, uh, and oftentimes, you know, we do do things, you know, because Jezebel will promote, uh, push you to, and then you react out of that pain and anger. You can't get yelled at for hours without finally standing up for yourself and saying something, saying enough is enough. I know there's a lot of times there's people that have like small children. They're like, what am I supposed to do? How am I going to survive? So they stay in these toxic relationships and it is hard. It is so hard because you have a loving heart and you want to do, you want to make it work, you know, but then that's why I think it's so important. I mean, I've talking to a really good friend and she was saying, you know what? You're having these true freedom tours, these true freedom conferences. Maybe we should also have true freedom marriage conferences. And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Positively. We need to have those, you know, you know, this, the, the, the true freedom will, it will speak to everybody. You know, children will be there, teenagers, older people, <laughs> um, singles, married, all that. But I can see this blossoming into marriage, true freedom, marriage conferences, true freedom, not all the, you got to love more. You got to respect more. You got to give them more sex, da, 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 da. All this surface crap that doesn't mean anything. You need to get down to the details and do a conference for the weekend and talk about deliverance. Let's go through deliverance. That's what changes the marriages, you know. So now that will be cool to have that, you know. Um, so it's it's happening. It's evolving a little by little, more by more. I know next year is going to be it'll be more fun for me because. Instead of driving around everywhere, I'm, I'm sensing I'll have a base and I can fly to these locations and bring in our team. And uh, you think about uh, the conferences that uh, I know that Todd White had. I, I've been to several of those, the uh, Power and Love conferences. They did those, I think, Thursday nights, Fridays and Saturdays. Um, you know, this might evolve into that to where it becomes more of a Friday, Saturday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, something like that but we have to walk before we run. And uh, these are truly impactful conferences. You know, when we start seeing the results of getting hundreds of people delivered, hundreds of people at one shot, and then getting healed physically. You know, oftentimes our physical stuff in our body is because of the emotional pain that we've gone through, that we need to go through forgiveness, true forgiveness, true repentance. Not just saying that we forgive and then have anger and hatred in our hearts for people but true freedom, you know, then out of that uh, comes the blessings of healings and uh, miracles and stuff. That is so awesome. So anyway, oops, it's after, it's been longer than an hour. I try to keep these to an hour, so. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and um, I'm excited, excited what God's doing. I'm excited what uh, God's doing in the ministry and in your lives. I'm excited to hear all the testimonies that keep coming in. I'm excited because God is in the process of pure, looking for a pure and spotless bride. Pure and spotless. And there's too many tainted brides. We are the bride and there's too many in the church that are filthy, that are behaving horribly to their spouses, horribly to their children. And uh, the church is not uh, uh, consecrated to the Lord. They're not pure and spotless. They have people in leadership that are tainted. So anyways, all right, I'll let you guys go. I love you. See you later. Bye-bye.